Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advice. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. The quarry held a meeting with Roman Pendragon. Johnny prevented Britta from falling into a feeding frenzy. Neil led a conversation regarding the signs of Gehenna and the meaning behind these omens. Roman Pendragon unveiled a powerful weapon from his clan's ancient past, along with the news of Jan Peterson's murder. Once you arrive to the first floor, the doors open. He does not, the, the, your guide does not get off the elevator, but sort of gestures for the group of you to step off the elevator. Does mm. anyone stay on or does everyone get off? Neil steps off. Wynn gets off. Johnny takes a, a hard look at the guy in the elevator. Kind of like looks him up and down. What's your name? What's it to you? Just curious. Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Johnny kind of nods and steps off the elevator. Britta seems a little frozen in the elevator, like she's not quite ready to take the step out, but she doesn't want to say either. Wynn holds the door open for her, just sticks a foot in. Doesn't urge her out, just keeps the door open for when she's ready. Ma'am, Kyle says, gesturing to get off. Yeah, and she does. Miles gets out of the elevator, but lets him... Close the elevator and go. Miles turns to look at Britta. If there was any time to figure out how to mend this rift between us and Pendragon, and any person, that's you. But if Pendragon doesn't see us as people, just as tools, this will never work. Can we talk about this somewhere else? No, probably not. You're going to have to do it now, Ish. Miles, I'm sorry. I I knew that Pendragon had killed someone, but I didn't know it was your sire, but... Looking around, who else is present? Still here. It was the orders of Hardest Sat that Lucinde was making that deal with Pendragon about. I got that sense. You're not mad at me? Why would I be mad at you? Did you kill Jan? Were you there? Britta actually looks guilty when you say, did you kill Jan? The bribe that Lucinde was using was my exemption. Because Lucinde intends on all of us dying in The battle in New Haven and Pendragon, that my exemption was the price for Pendragon to take out Jan Peter soon. When her face twists. I I didn't, I didn't ask for that. I, I I get that. He's being played in the same way. Because if you, he really thinks that you're exempt after all that, I, he doesn't get it. It was surprising that he didn't know he was getting played when he said that earlier he was generally surprised i think he believed in the camarilla and to some degree or another until he retrieved the information my sire was holding he knows based on i mean how he even started off that meeting he's taken the steps but we 
the tools that are necessary to do what he wants that we have are too precious to hand over a person that sees us as such. We need to be actual allies. And as much as I would love his strength going into these fights and possibly holding up some of these signs or changing them somehow, the way he currently sees us and everything else makes me think that he will. I begged him to do the right thing and stand up and be a leader in this time. Instead, he took it as a chance to call down open diablerie on New York. But that was the only way that he was going to get an army that was... No. No. I gave him an opportunity to be a hero. And he proved otherwise. That was how he was going to get the people together to be able to do what you My wanted. clan would have followed him if he asked for our loyalty. But instead, he has demanded subjugation. It is a fine line, but he is solidly on one side of that. Shame on me for letting him do it. I will not be shamed again by trusting him with this. But there is still time. We don't have a lot of it, but there is time. He... He wants to protect me, and... And he has protected me. And I see something in him, but I, I can't lie to you and tell you that I think that he sees you as people. Then you must convince him. Otherwise, we go our separate ways. And we don't know where that will end up for either of us. It leaves us separated without our combined strengths. Convince him to see you as people. I don't need a full thing. We just need him to be sort of a person. <laughs> you need, you're asking to convince him to not be kindred in his mentality. And, and that's not a judgment, Miles. It's, I, I'm weirdly agreeing with you. I, I think at the end of the day, that's kind of what I was saying. That's what we're all saying, right? We need to put away the jihad as much as we can. I think we need to look at this a different way. If we're just tools to him, then we don't look at him as a person either. How do we use him? You see, Britta Blanche. I'm not willing to do that right now. All I... of these people that keep dying around us is because we keep utilizing each other as tools. I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and Wynn just walks away. I'll, um... I'll, I'll catch up with her. Nope. You either see me with you or you don't. I keep jogging off after Neil. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna need that fix. <sighs> the two of you? Yep. Look, I, I... I know that he's a lot of things, but he's... also... brave and capable and out of the... I know, I know he does terrible things. I, I get it. I've been there, but he... You're drunk on him, Britta. Wynn calls from down the hall. And Britta goes quiet and smaller again. If we're not going to have time, if it takes time, what the proposed fix here that, that we're talking about... How long? Hours. It's not something we've ever done. We're going to need privacy unless you're okay with the locals seeing us bathe naked in the blood of a bull and get really high. Great. We'll but figure it out. If you can figure it out, or if we can make use of that courtyard and Pendragon, it doesn't matter. Either way. Um, we'll work on the permission. I'm going to go to do, uh, but uh, Britta, just one of the things I think it's important to know, um, yeah, Pendragon did that because of you with Peter Zoon, but I don't want you to take that to heart because if it wasn't that, it was going to be something else or someone else with different leverage. It's not... You, you didn't do it, okay? 
he was doing it so that I could survive. Mm -hmm. And And we know, we know that what we have to do to protect the people that we love in New Haven is, is a death sentence for us. And I, I want to protect New Haven. I want to protect our friends, but he was doing it to, to protect me. Sure, but what I'm saying is Jan Peterson is, is dead, be- not because of you, though, not because of that. That's just one act, and if it wasn't that act, it was another act. It would have been something different that led to his death, because Hardestad is the one who did it. And a lot of prophecy, a lot of prophecy and a lot of prognostication is just realizing that things become self-fulfilling. All the things on the checkmark of Gehenna, you know, the the, the rampant diablery and, and all of that is being unleashed you know, because of Pendragon's trying to fight against the end and maybe he's responsible for it. Uh, same with all of us. We can't stop ourselves from going where we're going. We just have to try. But you need to not take it to heart in this moment. Not that act. Okay? I don't know what that even matters because I... And... No, no. It's... You keep saying it's the end times. You keep saying that everything that we do has to be the last final moments. Yeah. And you don't want me to take it to heart? You don't want to take to heart that this is the only time that I have? That my memories start during Gehenna? Not that. No, I'm talking about that one specific act. To summarize, they would have found something else to use for Pendragon. Yeah, exactly. That. That's what I'm saying. To commit the murder. He just or they would have used, used a lot else. of different words and went back and forth. And But, yeah. That. Can you go after her now? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. Thank I just you. wanted to. And Neil hustles off. When you stepped away from the coterie, you're looking for grass. S- grass. Grass oh. on dirt. Something I can sink into. Heading out back, there is a very well kept courtyard, and as the space expands beyond the courtyard. There is this very large, well cared for um, field. It's it's too early in spring for it to be as like well trimmed, etc. As it, it will likely appear during the summer, but it is an open field. She makes her way into the field, takes off her shoes, just kind of tosses them over her shoulder. There are so many thoughts and feelings and impulses and ideas and instincts and needs that most of which she doesn't want and she doesn't they're not her own they are driven by this this crazy mix of double blood bonding and dominate and just kind of existential fuckery and if she doesn't get a dirt hug she's going to explode and so she spends a point of blood and starts sinking into the earth. There is peace there for a time. Silence. And in this state, you're only vaguely aware of your surroundings. You'd be able to feel if someone to step on the grass above you. Kind of hear if they were to shout enough. But for now, you're alone. When? When, when I, I know, I mean, I, I saw you, I saw you go down there. I when you can't you can't just walk off like like that. You just you need you need to talk to everybody. You can't when. I assume you can hear me. I don't know if you can actually hear me. No, you can hear me. We've. T- do I need to? Do I need to? Do I need to be la- when? Can you talk to me, please? When Neil does like a light thumping on the like he's knocking on a door, but down into the dirt. <laughs> you cannot move an earth meld, correct? You cannot. Yep. As a gangrel, you do have the ability to sink into the earth, but without being an elder, you 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 remain in that spot that you sink into. I meant like could I get an arm above my head? No. Then she adds annoyance to the list of things and oddly gratitude but she's not ready to come out yet hey so okay you're upset i get that 
So if you don't want to talk, I guess, I guess I'll talk for both of us. Um, and what am I supposed to say here? I, I know if you're set, everything that happened down there is, oh my God, how are we going to deal with that? I don't know how Miles is dealing with that. Um, I guess we should have seen something like this coming, but this one seems, uh, how am I going to, supposed to get Jan Peterson and the Vikos to talk to each other, and that's going to be way harder now. Um, I guess Miles has to be the Vikos? No, Miles will be Peter Zoon. Oh, God. Um, and yeah, I, I know it seems so stupid to say that, like, you're not okay, because obviously you're not okay for, like, a million reasons. But it's unlike you to, like, I don't know, snap at Britta like that. Like, you're not wrong. She is drunk on him, but like, I don't know. I don't feel like Yellen's going to be, I don't know if this is even working. Can you, I, if you, can you hear me? I'm going to assume you can hear me. rolls her eyes secretly admiring his persistence and will start to come up and her eyes kind of reach the surface of the dirt and glare at him like a shark breaching the water or an alligator. How physically does somebody come up from the ground like that? Because as she comes up, Neil is lying in the dirt, like directly over where her body sank in, like eyes where her eyes are, feet where her feet are, unconsciously maybe in the exact same position that she is with his face directly in the grass, like nose pressed into the dirt. Like he followed her out here, laid down on the ground and started talking directly into the mud. Well, there is no partially rising from earth melt. So she comes up just as she went down and finds you on top of her. As she comes up, she will grab you by the collar of your shirt, not angrily, but to make sure she doesn't just like knock you over and pull you to standing with her. Could you hear me down there or do I yes. have to repeat my... Okay. I understand you probably want some alone time. I don't think you do. I No, I do. I just don't think you should have it right now. Why don't you think I deserve that? Because we have a lot to do tonight. And what is it you think I can do right now in this state? Be there and ready for this council that's supposed to be happening so that as soon as it's over, we can get the fuck out of here. And what do you think I was getting ready for, Neil? Being unreachable because if I didn't follow you out here no one would have known where you were amongst the coterie presumably others could pull you do you want to look in my head right now Neil I don't think you want me to I don't then I won't but I know there's things you can't say because I don't need you to say them but you feel even more different this morning than you did when we talked yesterday, and I know she probably bound you again, but look, you're right. Maybe we have limited time. Maybe this is being selfish. Maybe we have limited time together, and I, I don't want you to spend it in a hole avoiding us because the only people you're avoiding down here are us. So the question becomes, why are you avoiding us? Me and Britta and Johnny and Miles. It's not you guys. Well, but we're the only ones you're avoiding down here. Who else am I avoiding, Neil? Lucinda, but she can come get you. Anyways. Then make her. I guess. If I am but... locked in one place, Neil, I don't find myself wandering to places where they are. So you need a buddy. Because... Uh, how, do, how, do, how, do I, how do I put this? Um... I, I feel like a, a lot of a lot of us do this do this thing where, where we're relying entirely on our own willpower to just go. Well, if I'm going to put myself over here um, and put on put on the sacrifice hat, put on the martyr hat, I I, I know I do it all the time. Um, then no one else will have to see me suffering. Um, I don't think I'm subtle when I'm suffering, Neil. No. I don't think but, I'm big about hiding my emotions, Neil. No, which is why I'm saying you shouldn't take yourself away. Because there's this thing 
then what when else? You, I. So, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want I, I, I want as, as as honest of an answer as I think you're capable of giving. Are you removing yourself from everyone because? you want to have your feelings alone for a bit or are you removing yourself from everyone so we don't have to see your feelings because those are two very different things i don't even know i know but i i neil my thoughts aren't mine anymore yes they are no they're not they stop where they twist around what they want where i might find them where i might make them happy with me there are ways out of, I was working on, I was thinking about ways to stop this kind of thing. I did it obliquely, but before you take yourself away from everybody else or before you're taken away from everybody else, I, I want you to know, um, we... Even if you feel like a shadow of yourself, even if you are a shadow of yourself, we all still want and need you around. Not and like this. Yes. No. no. I Like, when? Yeah. You have to trust me on this one. And maybe you don't want me to speak for everybody else. Maybe I won't speak for everybody else, but I'll speak for me. And what about what I want, Neil? What you want is to be with us. What I want is to have my own thoughts again. You... What I want is for someone else to not have to tell me what I want. Can have them. I got, um... I'm gonna explain the whole thing because it's long and it's trite and it's... Uh, trite's the wrong word. What word am I thinking? It doesn't matter. I had, um... I had some visitors last night. And they asked me... If they could give me anything moving into the final nights in a world with no masquerade, no Camarilla, no anything in a future that might be crushing all of us within weeks, months, years. What do I need? What do I want? Like a, like a genie you find asking you to reshape the malleable nature of reality. And I couldn't think of anything. I froze, panicked, and then all I could think about was you. And so I don't know if the genie's actually going to do anything or if it's a monkey's paw or if they can do anything. But I asked for your strings cut. To what? All of them. She looks horrified. All you have ever said, all you've ever told me, at least, that you ever wanted, was to just be able to do the things that were important to you and choose the people who were important to you. And... But if all my strings are cut, Neil, then nothing is. No, then you're Pinocchio. You're a puppet with no strengths. I mean, I don't think there's any escaping the jihad. I, I don't think there is, so long as the jihad exists. I, I have been having a lot of thoughts about that too, but... There are ways around things, uh, but sometimes it requires us to take on burdens and sacrifices that destroy us and I told you yesterday and I'm going to keep telling you every day and I'm not going to let you walk away to not hear it that if you can't remember who you are I'll remember for you until you can remember again and if you can't make decisions for yourself what if this gin has changed me well it's not a real gin this is metaphorical I know it's a metaphor Neil what if this magic smoke you let out of the box it's not actual magic either. It's Neil. It's a, people are playing games on me. I know. And, and you're I'm, one of them now. I'm trying to wipe the board. That's all. So is everyone else. No, 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 no. Everyone's no. trying to play a little game and I'm in the center of it. I'm just trying to put the pieces in your hands. That's all. 
because when I really, I've had this impending sense of doom for a long time and it's getting worse and worse every day. I like a train that's coming. I can't stop, but all I can do is try and make sure that nobody else is on the tracks as best as I can. None of us know what we're doing. And to be totally honest, I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but you're talking to a guy who is not even sure half the time if his thoughts are his. I get it when, but that means I also get that when there's a million voices in your head telling you a million different things and you're not sure which one's you, there is still a core that is you. And I have to believe that. And if you can't believe it right now, then I'm going to believe it for both of us until you can. I hate seeing you give up like this. I'm not giving up. It feels like you are. I'm cocooning. Okay. Because the things broiling inside me right now aren't me. And I don't know what they're going to become and I don't know what's going to come out. And I just need to be something strong enough to get through the few nights that we have. You are that, though. Not right now. Right now, I just want to... I want to make them happy, and that's all I want. I want to make them happy, and I want to tear them apart, but... And I haven't thought about Joey, and... And I know I should be sad about that. And it's just so not important to me. And I know that's wrong. I haven't thought about Kabir, and that should break my heart. And it doesn't, because I keep wandering this house, trying to end up closer to the people who seem to matter more. I can't speak to Kabir, but... And I'll, I'll put that on the list. That's an oversight on my part. But I have thought about Joey. Because I know it's important to you. So what I'm asking you right now, I guess, is to trust me for a little bit to keep caring about the things that are important to you until you can care about them again. And I know that you're gonna. Okay? And I'll put Kabir on the list. I'm sorry I didn't. I will get over my personal dislike of Kabir to care about him because you do. And chaps, I need... He's gonna have gotten into so much trouble. We can ask Miles to do that. Miles I don't, se seems to have I don't more of a put relationship. That it's chaps. I, he, I don't want to put that on Miles. He has so much else going on. Then I'll, I, I mean, I don't know chaps, but I'll do that one too. Make a list. You want to make a list? Make a yeah. list of the things that are important. You know how much I love lists. Yeah. I'll put them on separate pieces of paper. No, put them on one. I'm, I, I won't be able to. You, put them on one piece of paper. You don't want multiple lists no, I want of, one, with bullet no, points? You, no, I need one piece of paper that says things that are important to win. You love bullet points. I, you can bullet point the paper, but I'm going to lose. But win? Like, this is important. Like, don't put it like, I'm serious. Don't. But look. You're still early on finding the parts that are you and the parts that aren't. And... Do you know how to break a bond? Time away? Yeah. Kill them? Okay, that one too. That's the more traumatic way to go. She kind of like pats her chest and just like, what's a little more? A lot. It's a, it's a lot. Time away is one way. There's others. And I didn't mean to yell at Britta. I just wanted her to, wanted her to remember that while she's having fun, she needs to keep her head on straight. I think she knows that. The problem is... I don't like that she's being put in the position of being our hooker to Pendragon. I don't think that's what's happening. I think she actually legitimately wants to be there, which no, is more disturbing. No, she does, but now it's being capitalized. She's 19. The world's going to end. Let her fuck the guy she likes. Okay, I think that's what happened, though. I know it's what happened, and I want to talk to her about it. Okay, but you can't lead that conversation with yelling at her in a hallway and storming off. Kind I of didn't. I was already storming off. I called back. Okay, but see that exactly. Maybe she wanted to storm off. She's allowed. I wasn't going to stop her. Okay, but if you do it. I was starting it so she would feel comfortable. No, that's not how that works. That's exactly. It's you a don't, dramatic moment. It's hot you, girl shit. You don't understand. Okay, well, write it down for me. All right. It'll be on Wynn's important stuff. Hot girl shit. I'll try my best, okay? 
just sit with me next time, okay? I was. No, you I was were yelling down. at me through the dirt. Well, because I didn't know if you could hear me or not. I don't need to hear you. I can feel you. I don't think that was true. It, I knew it was you. You guys are my family, and I don't know how to help. You still see... You see Pit and Dragon as more than he's presented to us. And I see some of it, too. I've seen where some of these choices lead. I don't know how to... It's confusing. Being here again reminds me of how I felt when he took me here and when I felt trapped. And then there's moments like like seeing the ash under his fingernails and knowing. I know that he kills people. I, I know that, but it seems hypocritical in the moment to pretend like, like I don't know that any... Like, like that makes it real. But then he'll do other things, like stand up to Dark Selena for me. A fight that, that's, that fight, I don't know how anyone could survive. So, you don't know how. But is it worth trying? You want me to, what do you need me to do? But didn't answer the question. Just skipped right by. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. You don't know how. Is it worth trying? To make him see us as people? Essentially. To see people again. He... And there is a thought. Very clearly, there is an inspiration that Britta is not sure of that walks across her face in real time. Um, he wanted to, um, he wanted to bond further. And the first time that we did it was mutual. Um, if, if I kept going with that, maybe that would make it harder for him not to care about how I feel about you guys. That's an option, but that's your choice. If there are many other ways that you might go about it, but it is the way you have to choose. This is... We don't have more time. He doesn't... Asking him for more humanity. I don't know that that's something that I can provoke in him that quickly. I have seen flashes like... Like the empathy of a soldier looking at a soldier. It's the sort of thing that made me look at him differently. But it feels gross to suggest the blood bond as a way forward to that when everyone is so scared of that for win right now. And I remember how it felt with Roland's. Because neither of those were a choice for them. For you and for her. There's a difference when you can choose. I think he... is gonna feel rejected by what just happened. And I think I need to... If I, if I had a chance to do what you're asking, to convince him that... He shouldn't feel that way. These are some of our last hours before the battles are on. You should talk to him regardless. I'm just telling you what I think may lead to some sort of resolution to all of this. And that I know sometimes these moments are hard to grasp. I don't want Wynn to be mad at me either. Wynn's mad at everyone right now. Mostly because Wynn's mad at her own situation, too. Which is not of her fault. It's for sticking by us. So she's allowed to be mad at everyone, especially me. When... Um... 
last night he had wanted me to not fight in New Haven, that you guys would go on to fight. Now he's suggesting that we all don't fight in New Haven, and I don't know that I find that to be an option, but it does mean there's an expansion of scope. Seems like a good sign. Look, out of all of us, to one degree or another, you can see something there. And I think you have the best chance of helping Roman out of the pit that he's climbed into. Because I also think you don't want him to be there. I can try. I... I feel like I've been climbing out of pits ever since I've been awake. There are ledges. There is light above. We do what we can. We make the choices we have to. Okay, we need to go back in and find everybody soon, but I will sit here for a bit. I'm not I'm not going to spend the blood to go back in. I'm already out, but I know. What do you know about bronze thermoses? What do you mean? Bronze thermoses you touch and blood bonded to people. Oh, vessel of transference. I have one. You're it's not, not bronze. Old, mine's, um, mine's plastic. Came in a lunchbox. You're not a Justicar. Well, that's not a just to carry a thing. That's that's just blood source. I know. That's why I'm saying hers probably is nicer than a Ninja Turtles lunchbox one. I don't think so. Ninja Turtles is arguably cooler. Like on a binary level, they are cooler. Exactly. Either way. Also, what do they do? Fun other- hints, by the way. You can't quite feel the cold through the plastic in the same way. That makes sense. What do they do? They do anything other than there is blood inside. You touch it. And the, the vessel of transference, it transfers the blood that's inside into you, and it transfers your blood into it. So can she read my blood that way? I mean, she has your blood now. Can it be digitized? Di- what do you mean digitized? She was looking at computers. What do you mean digitized? Like Tron? What are you talking about? Like, can the information... God damn it, Neil. You're making me explain stuff when I don't have... I still have dirt in my lungs. Is it possible? Are there paradigms of magic that deal with, like, computers and shit? There, the, I mean, well, so there, there's a, a, a thaumaturgical path uh, more common in, in Tremere and stuff that has to do with the manipulation of technology. You can sort of do stuff. I don't know a lot about it. Um, there's... Uh, an ancient Asamite sorcerer who's bound to a series of CD-ROMs. Uh, um, oh, don't. We'll stop there. Um, so is it possible she could take my blood from the thermos and read it on her computer? Like instantly? Yeah, or not. That's not, my knowledge. Or like, okay. Yeah, do it's they been enhance a while since I've or... put the like... It's it's been a while since I've said caveat anything is technically possible, so anything's technically possible. I don't want to say no, but unless you saw her like I don't know performing an occult ritual immediately with the blood that you had while that you gave her in the computer, which would presumably involve her taking it out of the bronze thermos, as you put it. Well, I lost five minutes of time when I was looking at her fingers and looked at the screen, so I don't fucking know what I saw. Unless she's an. In- <sighs> Even if she was going double time, I feel like a ritual like that would take more than 10 minutes, five minutes. So I would say it's not likely. Why? 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 Just adding it to the list of things being done and known about me without... So with blood, here's things that I know you can do. You can look at somebody's generation. You can figure out what their sire is. You can see if they're blood bonded to anybody. You can see if they have any sickness in their blood. You can learn about what their clan is. Um, you learn a lot of stuff. Blood bonds to or from? Uh, it's both in theory. It, it depends. There are different ways to learn about blood bonds. The Tremere can do it pretty easily. I actually can kind of do it now. 
but I don't do it publicly because I have to quote from a book to do it. And I'm not supposed to read that book. She seems unnerved at this. Why? You worried about them finding out I'm blood bonded to you? They probably know that already. Not you specifically. Could be her. Not him is, specifically. Who else is blood bonded to you? Other people. To you or are you bound to them? Actually, you know what? If you're worried about people finding out about it, shut up. He, like, she gives a thumbs up. Looks around the courtyard. I'm sorry, that was rude. I shouldn't have said shut up. But, um, that was... No, talk dirty to me. Yeah. Um, Let me be me while I can be. I feel like you're going to be you no matter what. I break out every now and then. There's these... Here's what I'll say. Hmm. It's my estimation that it was not the blood bond to Lucin that put the stick in the asses of the other Archons that we've met. Even Glenn was a little bit of a sass when we met him. I don't think that was the blood bond either. I think that was just Glenn. Just because somebody takes up a place in your heart doesn't mean they take up your whole heart. No, they just drive your motivations. You got more motivations than one. You can have competing motivations. It's honestly more the dominate. You've been dominated? Which dominate are you referring to? That's the only dominate I can remember. That offers one instance of absolutely horrific pain. Before the words when innocently meant to say can make it past her lips. It's like Athena is being birthed from her skull and she grabs her head and gives this absolutely gut-wrenching to hear for Neil scream, a scream that he has probably never heard in person before. He may have heard one similar in her memories, may have seen a similar pain in her memories, but she drops to her knees, holding her head and dropping to her side and writhes and screams until he, she has no voice left to scream with, and even then continues to writhe and shake and shiver and gnash her teeth together until they crack. At the first moment of the scream, Neil almost jolts out of his skin, is instantly scanning the darkness around them for signs of threat of whatever, what is doing this to win, and then seeing nothing hovers over her helpless and afraid for just a couple seconds before crouching down and just putting a hand on her back like knowing he can't do anything like he needs to be as close to her as possible maybe there's some point of connection or Wynn is a very tactile person she always comforts others through touch so Neil is tentatively trying to do the same until it passes. When it starts to ebb, she's aware of a single warm spot. And after what to her feels like a lifetime, she finds herself curled up and without thought and grabs onto Neil's shirt and just holds on. Too spent to cry, but the instinct is there. As she's lying there in his lap, just sort of curled up against Neil, he's like petting her hair, like running his fingers along the hairline between where her actual like hair hair is and where the sides of her head are shaved. And eventually just goes... As she starts to calm. I have a million questions. But. I feel like asking those questions could prompt another one of those. So I'm not going to ask you. And I don't want you to try and tell me. She kind of gives a tight nod. That was not a particularly. Pleasant piece of the puzzle to give me. When. For you. I'm not. For me, I, I mean, for, but, um, 
a message received. So, we'll, um, we're going to stay here for a minute. And we'll go inside. I'm going to need you to get the baby Bjorn. I don't think I'm strong enough to put you in it, so you're going to have to help me out. I think we'll manage. And then just sit there. Miles. The coterie is assembling. One at a time, they come to the meeting room to speak with you before you head off and engage in what will be the plan to defend New Haven. They file in one at a time and are ready to hear what you have to say. Miles is standing there in his one of his better suits, uh, covered in a series of pins, very fancy platinum sword, cufflinks, a roaring lion pin on it that holds his tie together, an iron circlet that makes up his belt buckle. On his collar, he has a pin of a quill and a scroll. And then across his breast, he has a white cross, a sword through the Zamitsi symbol, and a silver crescent moon. And on the other side of his collar, he has wings with a halo made out of gold. This is the most adornment you've ever seen on him. <laughs> As Britta approaches, her eyes fall on to all the pretty pens. And sort of a reflex, she pulls one of her hands closer to herself, and tries to offer half a smile, tell Miles, Hey, um, we match. This one comes from the death of a lupine. Oh, um, venture stuff? Venture stuff, yes. yes. Anyways, I've been called to the meeting. Johnny, you'll be going with me. Oh, that's fun. I thought we were all going to be going. It seems that we have upset her power by not going to her summons first. I went. We all didn't go. They, got, they got into a pissing contest and we went. Correct. You went Pendragon? That's... Yes. Yeah. yeah. So a couple pieces of news first. Let us all start with the good news. <laughs> uh, I was able to get in contact with New Haven Court, specifically Nara. And a couple Is she okay? A couple of ghouls. Yes, she's fine. That That's not the... We were able to recover Fuster. He... <sighs> Neil just, like, blue screens. Wait, completely blanks I... out. How? Well, He's alive? Yes. It seems that... Marcus Vitale didn't burn his own house down, much like any other venture I would have figured. So that's why I sent people to go check. Neil walks across the room and hugs Miles. He Wynn walks across the room and hugs Miles. He grimaces and then returns the hug. Johnny right. shoots you a uh, finger gun and goes, uh, the thought's there, but I'll let you, uh, we can I'll make let you, I'll let you enjoy those. Okay, I'm going to mess up my pins. <laughs> With that statement, Neil pushes back and then just like really fastidiously like... Okay, just... That's like, le question. levels them all off. Do you, do you actually think all those uh, Venture Boy Scout badges are going to be a good move in this crowd? Well, being that it's partially run by a Venture, I guess. Win, right. let's go. Number two, Neil, Britta, possibly win. We need to do that ritual. Yeah, I, I um, it, I can try and gather or send people to, to, to gather some stuff that we need. It would be easier with the bull, but if we can't get it, I, I can try and at least do something. Um, as long as we have some Khalif and, um, does so it need to be a bull for the ritual? I want to do. Yes. But since this is all untested anyways, because neither of them can actually approach a ladder. I'm sorry. What ritual are we talking about here? Unfucking their brains. Undoing the damage that the dragon did. Trying to guide them both to a place of re self actualization. I can get a bull, but I need you to get it cleared, um, or at least inform him politely. You know he's not, after that meeting, gonna be in a good mood for that kind of request. Are we gonna have to stay at the meeting? Honestly, I would prefer to do this not at Pendragon's house. Well, it seems like we'll be going from here to the siege, so we're not gonna have a lot of in-between time. If we can have everything set up, or if you can get permission for me to go back to the house, we could do it there. Fuck permission. Ask for forgiveness. Johnny, I'm going to be sacrificing a bull and doing a blood magic ritual. Johnny takes a long drag on his morally. Johnny, that might be the reason why only you're going to this meeting. Yeah. And I don't really care. Fucking 
cut a bull open in his home. Thanks, bud. Thanks for not caring that we're all getting cut out of this because of your bullshit. My bullshit. Yes, your bullshit. No, I, I was, I was. So it's not just messing up his house. We're going to be in a trance-like state for several hours, and I don't necessarily want to be here when Miles, Britta, and I are intensely vulnerable. I tell you what, if you're so mad about missing the meeting, you go. Her power may take me. Okay. I'm mad that we can't all go together. It, it, it doesn't have anything to do with Johnny. We, we weren't, John, Johnny, Brennan, and I weren't, weren't presented a, a choice. But, None of us were. Well, M Miles kind of was, it sounds like. Yeah, and then Johnny mouthed off to Pendragon during that meeting, and Miles chose against her power. Nobody fucking knows. Anyways. Well, well, ain't I, you in a mood today, huh? I Don't when, start, Johnny. When, okay, we're, we're all on the same page. Let's focus here. It doesn't matter who goes to the meeting, um, so long as we talk about it when we get back. Right, yes. We're not going to have time, so we're going to have to do it here. So it might be best to inform him that you're getting healing from Neil and to look out for you slash me. Neil, I know, I know you don't like when people talk about your blood magic, but being able to say what we're doing, that would be helpful in him not getting offended, and he probably kind of already... Knows everything after the trial. My intention to take the two of you on a spiritual psychic journey to find the broken cores of yourselves and attempt to re rebuild them. Okay, but you need a bull and a couple hours and... We need a few hours so that we can functionally trip out, kind of, and go on a psychic journey. And part of the ritual is sacrificing it. And doing a lot of forbidden drugs. What do you mean, forbidden drugs? It's Khalif. Oh, okay. Um, all, all it, this is not just like a Tremere ritual. This is a, a, a spiritual journey um, with a lot of undertones um, that is, I guess, technically what I'm going to be attempting is a perversion of a sacred rite. I'm not going to put it that way, um, but... Yeah, maybe we don't tell the children of Hakeem I'm doing it this way either. Right. I won't mention it to them. Oh, thank God. More secrets. I well, can try and ask after the meeting, but I, I just don't know if it's going to go well, just, considering how... I want to help. How, it's my only idea. Well, considering how downstairs went, I don't yeah. know. But I can try. That's all I'm asking. Otherwise, the bulls are going to show up, and then we're going to have a great time. All right. Do you need me to run interference or buy you time while you're getting high? What the hell's going on? While it's happening, we are going to be totally, we're going to be presumably, if things go the way I think they're going to, be having out-of-body experiences in the middle of functionally enemy territory. So if the two of you could make sure that we don't get, I don't know, slaughtered while we're doing it. Johnny looks at the, uh, he opens up the pack of Morley's, looks at how many he has remaining. He goes, uh, you better get another pack of cigarettes along with that bowl and whatever else you're getting. Sounds like a plan. Wynn has snapped from functionally angry to functionally dissociating and is just kind of sitting on the bed holding a pillow and nominally listening. But she kind of nods. I don't know what this meeting is going to entail. Probably the details of the battles are going to go on. It could just be them shitting on me for the next hour. I'm not entirely sure. It's... Very... Probably discussing positions of strategic importance. I'm hoping that's... That's the top level. The underneath level is probably they're going to be showing you the noose they're going to hang you with. That's fine. I mean, we're all on the same page, right? Britta, you sort of mentioned some of that. We've been talking about it. What's going to happen here? Yeah. Um. I think maybe they'll show you a plan that seems like you could win. And... You know what that means. We're going to see what's presented. And we're going to try our best from there. Um. I. Pendragon had made a deal to exclude me from that. But he was trying to have me not fight. I, I told him no. I told him I wanted to be with you guys. You had mentioned. Okay. I'm glad to have you there. Wynn looks like there's more she wants to say on that, but 
kind of just shakes her head and drops her eyes like she knows what'll happen if she tries. Sorry, I just, I don't know. It feels like we haven't had a chance to talk to each other. There's nothing I can say. I'll say it then. Uh, Brett, are you sure you don't want to take that deal? Because anybody who goes into New Haven is probably going to die. And all of us here care about you. So if there's an exit ramp, I'm not saying I don't want you there. I would much rather have you there. I'm very scared to go die. But um, if you're being offered an opportunity, I I think there's something to be said for considering it at least. It's not just you guys that I abandon if I don't go. Yeah. Everyone that we care about in New Haven, even the Torridor that I've been running combat practice with, the mortals that we know, and I can't help protect you guys if I'm not there, and and you're my family. I, I get that it's probably a death sentence, and I don't even know what that means. But Wynn's face is screaming, and there's nothing coming out, but there is clear desperation. Neil looks at Wynn and then looks back at Britta and goes, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're choosing wrong because, I mean, for me, I, I would, I am making the same choice. I just, I think it's worth discussing. That's all. You guys ran into near certain death for me at the Chantry. Neil looks guilty. Neil, okay, um, you get it. It, it doesn't have to be the Shanshi. Any example no, I, works. I, I get it. I get it. And we're going to do our best to avoid the whole everyone dying outcome. We're not going in there to lose. Wynn gets up and goes in the bathroom and shuts the door. Okay. She carries a pillow in with her. Okay. It's... Neil. Neil looks at Miles and shrugs. In, Anything in, else, guys, before I head off to this meeting here? Neil? Yeah? Do we go in there, or do we give her a moment? She did the outside version of this earlier, and I got a mouthful of dirt. Um, I will so talk to her before I leave. She'll... Okay. Wynn is down a part of the spiral that some of us have been down before, and it's a hard part of the spiral. And that's... And in a, in a, in a less hopeful place than usual. Anything else anyone else to add before we get off to do what we need to do? No, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm going to call Fester and Nara and everybody and just to talk to them. If uh, but, <clears throat> if we manage to survive all this bullshit, um, I'm officially resigning from my post as Seneschal. Probably from the Camarilla. Assuming we survive. But I figure you, should, you ought, to, ought to have a heads up. I mean, we're planning for a non-Camarilla future anyways, so... Maybe if we need help in this battle, maybe we keep that in mind with who we choose to call, how we try to survive. Oh, I, I didn't mean personally, non camera I mean globally, but I, I, yes, I see what you're saying. Just, Great. just something to keep in mind throughout the meeting. Yeah. All right, let's get to it, guys. Miles? Yes. Can I have a hug too? Yes. He he hugs her in such a way to try to not mess up his pins again. <laughs> Britta is actually like way more careful. <laughs> Cuddling on in. Miles will disengage himself and go into the bathroom and close the door behind him. When is sitting leaning against the bathtub, hugging onto his pillow, kind of like chewing on the corner of it. And she looks up at him. What do you need? Everyone's making me their toy, man. That's not the point here. She kind of holds out her arm. Please let me know that I'm not just a toy to you two. Is that what you need? Yes. Miles takes his glasses off. Straightened out his uh, suit and tie, goes down to one knee and grabs her arm. When the look on her face is like desperate and embarrassed that 
maybe for the first time in her life, she has never been shy about ensuring that her physical intimacy needs are met. But maybe for the first time, she has had to advocate that her emotional intimacy needs be met. And she didn't want to put that on Miles. And there is this unbearable relief that it wasn't even an argument. He just was Miles. Miles is looking for ascension? She kind of nods. She doesn't stop chewing on the pillow. He kind of frowns at the pillow thing and then puts the arm in his mouth and proceeds to drink. And when she feels he's had enough, she pinches his nose and starts pulling his face away. It's very undignified. I know. Believe me, there's a lot of indignity happening inside me right now. I won't tell anyone about yours. I was like, this is about me right now. Oh, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) And she does actually laugh. He put his glasses back on, check himself in the mirror to make sure nothing. He has just the smallest spot of red on his lips. He will clear that off with his thumb. She does not lick his thumb. But the instinct is clearly there. See if you can help out Neil then. Get what we need. We need to be at full strength. Do you just want me to go out and make cow sounds on the front lawn? I, no, we we can just purchase cows. We don't need to summon them. Because honestly, if we're going with the whole fuck these people, then I'm happy to go. I, I don't need an incident. I'm fine with fucking them a little more subtly than a, a bull stampede. It's going to be a stampede. It was going to be very subtle. Oh. Just me making cow noises on the front yard and getting police reports written. Yeah, let's not... Let's. Let's try to avoid that for now. Okay. Let's call that plan Z. So you're telling me there's a chance. 25 other plans fail, you're up. All right. Wish me luck. She kind of like realizes she'd been holding on to his shoulder and let's go. Good luck. And Miles will come out of the bathroom. You ready, Johnny? Johnny kind of looks at you, kind of gives a quizzical look towards the bathroom, kind of nods. Let's do this. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Savinport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Muirhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfest. This episode edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. You straight up sound like Johnny right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can the computers get me? <laughs> Tell me, young man. <laughs> Look, Y2K is a very real fear for her. It's coming. <laughs> All right, since um, I have a pause, I'm just going to double check that particular feature. <laughs> I, you, know, you know computers, tell me! <laughs> the, the, the Ninja Turtles line was pretty fucking top tier. Mm-hmm. Better than a Ninja Turtles lunchbox? I don't think so. <laughs> that, it was the, like, mm-hmm. fuck that bitch, yeah. she's wrong. Okay, I, I am going to pause the Rare audio confidence. for a second, just double check it.